if multiple of us make it to the NBA, I think we could have a brand in the future. Potentially create our own store. Like I think sky's the limit. Javon Quinnerly, born November 25th, 1998. Today's feature was a part of an internet sensation that went viral in 2017 called Jelly Fam, which really consisted of undersized guards attempting to make not being blessed with the physical tools like size and athleticism cool by adding more sugar, if you will, to their moves, specifically how they finished at the rim. Around the 2010s, it seemed high school basketball got a lot more athletic where players were doing dunks I couldn't imagine as a high school player, influenced by the period right before them and at its peak of small guards playing above the rim. They would design themselves mid-air into graceful finishes, creating art in motion for the little guy, not blessed as a high flyer, in an era above the rim was still sought after. It was relatable, easy for anyone to be a part of, and the characters involved were perfect for the boom of social media in the 2010s. Javon Quinterly was not just one of the Jelly Fam, he was the only McDonald's All-American who was supposed to have been the star of the show and future face of the brand behind Isaiah Washington. What made Quinterly so special and fit for the role was he had the look, the youth, and most importantly of them all, he actually had a shot at making the NBA. He was that talented as a ball handler, scorer, and distributor, unlike Washington who was really a shooting guard trapped in a point guard's body that didn't score well enough or assisted well enough and at his size and disinterest on the defensive end presented a liability when on the floor for high level basketball. People became hyped about Javon because he was still young at that point with his whole future in front of him and a developing fan base on the internet that didn't understand the reality of the journey of basketball. All the hoopla on social media and YouTube can get you the notoriety you need to put you on the radar of scouts who may have missed you, but in reality when college coaches whose jobs are on the line and NBA scouts whose careers are at stake have to evaluate your game and decide whether to invest in you, they never consider how many followers you have on social media. Sure, that's great for selling tickets, but a major sport like the NBA will sell tickets regardless if one player is on board or not. Most important is your talent and how much of an advantage can you give my team compared to this other guy over here. Quinterly immediately got off to a rocky start entering college under FBI investigation for corruption in college basketball, then not being a great fit at his first school, losing their support with one social media post, to transferring and finally having success before going down at the finish line, to watching younger players come in and leave you behind, to now transferring once again to his third school and what would be his sixth year on the NCAA level, almost solidifying an NBA opportunity maybe off the table and the official end to an internet sensation called Jelly Fam. Will he make the NBA or another high level pro league? Anything could happen, but as of right now, for these reasons, his growth was stunted. What happened? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Javon Quinterly is a 6'1 point guard from Hackensack, New Jersey, who was the Gatorade Player of the Year for New Jersey in back-to-back -back years leaving high school. Before then, he was becoming popular for his association to Jelly Fam, which became the new social media craze in basketball 2016-17. In 2018, he became a McDonald's All-American, giving himself the best chance leaving high school, seeing as studies have shown that from 50 to 59% of McDonald's All-Americans eventually make the NBA. He was set to go to a top school in Arizona until the assistant coach who recruited him was accused in federal documents of giving Quinterly up to $15,000 to come to their school. Because of it, he committed to Villanova and had a less than enthusiastic freshman season, playing 9 minutes a game and averaging 3 points. After posting on social media his regret for choosing Villanova, his time there soured and he transferred to Alabama. 
Stone number one, an ACL tear right at the door. Javon's career beginnings weren't ideal, coming in under investigation, then transferring and having to sit out a year, but in 2021, he was finally ready to suit up for his new team, and in the surprisingly limited minutes of just 25 a game, he averaged 13 points, 3 assists, and shot an astounding 43% from 3, attempting over 4 a game in 30 games. Oh, and yeah, was the SEC tournament MVP after leading them to the title in conference play. One could argue that was the year he should have left for the league and that could have some credence to it but just the same could have been a poor choice and he ended up undrafted with no eligibility. He came back for another year of college basketball, a now redshirt junior season in 21-20 where he was an even better scorer and passer even though much less the shooter he was a year prior. Still, he was on scouts radar, only needing a big tournament to show possible second round interest could be in his future. In a first round win versus Vanderbilt, Quinnelly had 13 points, 4 assists and 5 rebounds. In the second game versus Notre Dame in his first 3 minutes of action, he goes down with an ACL injury and has to return to school right when he had the chance to take his talents to the next level. He came back in less than 10 months but was not the same player who was already borderline league material. Stunt number 2, Lost a Step The biggest fear when a player gets injured is how he'll be when coming back from such a devastating injury. I've always felt ACL tears are up there among some of the worst injuries in sports because it happens to a bodily area so important to a basketball player physically and mentally and ligaments aren't like bones that can grow back or regenerate themselves to be just as strong or reliable as before. Then to think of the mental aspect of trusting your body and not being afraid to go down once again is so much pressure on top of attempting to show you can still be the same player you was before at the very least. Quinnerly's ACL tear happening right at the point he could have been considered as a pro prospect was demoralizing I'm sure, but what hurt him further was him not bouncing back from it a better player, instead it was clear visually and looking at his stats that he lost a few steps. During the 22-23 season he played in 35 games as a reserve player, starting 6 of them at 21 minutes a game. At this point to say he had an uphill battle is an understatement. He was coming off major knee surgery, already an older prospect compared to prospects in the draft and he wasn't performing on a different level than his previous years. In fact, it was more than clear that he might never reach those already mediocre numbers early on in his career again. To me, that was the final blow in a scout's eyes to Javon's future on the NBA level. Nice player when healthy, even borderline NBA draft pick but already hobbled and after spending so much time trying to figure out the NCAA level, the chances he has success on an NBA team are slim to none. Stunt number 3, Just Not Enough Lastly, what I think will be remembered about all JellyFam members at this point was they just didn't have enough of the talent it took to get to the NBA level. There were no conspiracies or politics involved, it was in fact never meant to happen. If you think about the basis of what JellyFam was built on, it was always coming from a place of long shot. The Jelly layup as they call it was created by a bunch of guys that weren't physically blessed to play above the rim but still wanted to be involved in what's cool and they made something out of nothing and turned it into huge followings. But it just didn't negate the fact most those guys are liabilities on professional levels, especially the NBA. At that size and lack of athleticism, my advice is to either become an irresistible scorer that can't be stopped in the lane using a deadly, perfected floater and layups, or become a great shooter and or floor general who can pass. All the crossovers and jelly finishes in the world don't give you more than 2 points and doesn't help you play better defense or in Javon's case save you from injuries. It's the reality of the social media sensation. 
all hype around a product that was never fitted for the levels expected because of the hype. Quinterly was good. I actually liked his all around game, but his college career went mostly disappointing. Now he's looking to transfer once again when sadly it just won't be enough. All in all, Javon Quinnelly can and probably will get an opportunity overseas at some point and can do well there in some league far from home, but the outcome won't match the hype and expectation created by once going viral. Hopefully he can find a school he can enjoy a final year and who knows, completely go off and show his 8 points a game last season was a fluke and he has fully healed, but for right now, at this moment, for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth and I'm out.